In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this amazing Winner Picker app using Quasar Framework and Vue.js. And it's going to be a lot more fun than most Winner Picker apps on the internet. So we have this screen with a beautiful curtain in the background. and We can stick some names into this box. So let's use this to choose the winner of the Worst Sexual Predator Award. So I'm going to stick some names in here, like Bill Cosby, Harvey Weinstein, and let's not forget R. Kelly. And when we click this button, we're going to see the curtain fly up to reveal a stage. We're going to hear a drum roll and see a nice animation before the winner's announced. So let's find out who the winner is. And the winner is Bill Cosby. Well done, Bill. If you're new here, my name's Danny. I'm an indie app developer. And if you want to learn how to create cross-platform apps for iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows from a single code base, click subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss anything. So before we create this Winner Picker app, we just hit 1,000 subscribers on this channel. So I just wanted to give a huge shout out to all you guys, especially everybody who's subscribed, liked a video, left a comment, or joined one of my courses. And to say thanks, I'm going to be giving away my full Quasar Framework Udemy course to one lucky winner. If you want to take part, all you need to do is click subscribe and leave a comment below with the hashtag giveaway telling me why you love Quasar. And if you've already joined this course, please leave a comment as well. Just don't add the hashtag. Okay, let's get started with this app. So I'm going to close this process, this dev process, and just close this tab for now. And if you don't have Quasar installed, you want to jump to quasar.dev. Uh, click on install and it tells you how to install it here and you'll need to install node as well but once you've done that we can create a new project with the quasar create command so i'm going to jump over to the terminal and i'm going to jump up to my project folder and run quasar create and then the name of our project i'm going to call it winner picker it's asking us for a project name i'm just going to leave that as it is product name i'm going to put winner picker I'm going to leave the description, leave the author. For the CSS preprocessor, I'm going to choose SAS with SCSS syntax. And we have a new option here where we can pick our Quasar Components and Directives import strategy. And if we choose this auto import option at the top, it means that we don't have to manually add components and directives to our config file every time we add them, which used to be so painful. So thanks, Razvan. So I'm going to go ahead and choose auto import. I'm going to disable all of these options because we don't need anything fancy for this app. I'm going to leave the Cordova ID and I'm going to use npm to install it. Okay, that's installed. It tells us how to launch it here. So I'm going to cd into the folder, cd winner picker, and run quasar dev. Okay, it's launched our app in the browser. I'm going to drag the folder it's created into my editor. And I'm going to adjust the layout a little bit. I'm going to get rid of the header and get rid of this draw. So we don't need either of those for this simple app. So I'm going to jump to source, layouts, mylayout.view. I'm just going to get rid of this header. I'll get rid of this draw as well. So we should just have a pretty much empty page now, apart from this image. And I'm going to jump to our page file, which is in pages, index.view. We can see that Quasar image here. And I'm just going to rename this page to Winner Picker, just to make it a bit more clear what it's all about. So winnerpicker.view. And this will break the app now, because if we go to our roots file in the router folder, this root here is looking for index.view, and we've just renamed it. So I'm going to change that to Winner Picker. Save that. Okay, now we're ready to start building our app. Oh, f***ing freezing in here. Right, let's start by adding some backgrounds. So we need to add a curtain background and a stage background. So I'm going to jump to a site called pixabay.com. And I'm going to search for stage. And this is the image I want. So I'm going to click on that. Click download. Click download. No, I'm not a robot. Okay, click download again. Uh, I'm going to drag this into my statics folder within my project. And I'll rename this to stage. And then I'm going to search for theater curtain. And this looks pretty sexy. So I'm going to click on that one. 
click download, click download, download. And I'm going to drag that again to my statics folder and rename that to curtain. Okay, let's add the stage to our page now. So I'm going to get our app back in the browser and open up my editor, jump to our winner picker page. I'm going to get rid of this image. And I'm going to create a div here with a class of stage and a class of full screen, which will make this div take up the whole of the space of the page. So I'm going to save that. And I'm going to add a style section so we can add some style to this div. I'm going to set the lang to SCSS so I can use some SCSS. I'm going to target this stage div. And I'm going to give it a background image of slash statics slash stage dot jpeg i'm going to give it a background size of cover so the image covers all of the available space within the div i'm going to add a background position of center to center it and i'm going to give this a z index because we're going to be doing some stacking here with our elements i'll give it a z index of one because this is going to sit right at the back so i'll save that okay we can see our stage looks pretty good but it's a bit bright so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the page itself a black background and I'm going to add some opacity to this stage element so on this Q page element up here I'm going to add a class of BG dash black and then I'm going to add an opacity to this stage of let's say 0.3 save that okay that looks nice and dark now okay so let's add another div for the curtain so after this stage element in fact I'm just going to duplicate that and change stage to curtain um, we'll add some style for that div in fact i'm just going to duplicate these stage styles and rename stage to curtain because us coders like to be lazy and i'm going to get rid of the opacity property and i'll set the z index on this to two because we want the curtains to sit on top of the stage just realize the div is called curtain not curtains so i'll get rid of that silly s silly s okay i'll save that see how that looks okay we can't see the curtains why the f not oh it's because i put curtains in the path instead of curtain what a fool okay save that reload the page i still can't see these pesky curtains let's just jump to our project folder oh it's because it's png doofus Right, so I'm going to change this JPEG extension to PNG. Save that. Okay, we can now see our curtains. Very lovely. So we want to be able to show and hide this curtain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position it up off the page to begin with. And then we'll add a class, which will bring it back down again. So I'm going to add a transform property. And I'm going to set translate Y. So the Y position of the element to minus 100% to bring it completely off the top of the page. Save that. I'm going to add a transition property so we can get this to animate. So we want to animate the transform property and I'll give the animation a duration of 0.3 seconds. Save that. And now I'm going to add some styles for a class which will bring it back down onto the page. So we could call that class show and we just want to set transform to translate y and then zero percent save that okay let's just see if that class is working so just full screen this for a minute and if we find our curtain element click on this class thing here and we add a class called show we should see it jump down okay pretty good get rid of the class and it jumps back up sweet Okay, so we're going to need a section where we can add some names. So before I do that, I'm just going to make sure this curtain is down to begin with. So I'm going to add that show class to the curtain div. And I'm going to stick a cue card component on the page. If you want to learn about the cue card component, just jump to the Quasar site and the documentation page and just go to view components and card. You can learn all about that there. Okay, but I'm going to stick a cue card on the page and I'm going to give this a class of add names and a class of column. 
so that everything inside it will be stacked. And then inside that, I'm going to add a queue card section component. And inside there, I'm going to stick a H2 with a heading for our app, which will just be winner picker. Save that. Okay, we can't actually see that on the page yet. I think that's because we need to add a Z index to this add names element. So I'm going to add some styles for that. So I'll target the add names class and I'll give that a Z index of three. Okay, and we can now see that on the page. Now I want this card to be kind of red. So I'm going to add a class to the card of BG red. And I'm going to style up this heading a little bit. So I'm going to add some classes to that. I'm going to add text center. And I'm going to remove the top margin with Q-MT for margin top dash none. And I'm going to reduce the bottom margin on it with Q-MB dash MD for medium. And I'm going to give it a class of text white to make it white. And a class of text bold to make it bold. Okay, that looks a bit better. I'd like it to have a really nice deep drop shadow on it. So I'm just going to Google for CSS text shadow generator. And I'm going to click on this first link. And I'd like to have this kind of shadow effect. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to grab. I only need the text shadow styles, but it will only let me copy all of it. So I'll copy all of that. And then inside this add names selector. We'll target that H2, paste in these styles. Now I don't need the color and the background and the letter spacing, so I'll get rid of those. Save that. Wow, that looks so hot. Right, we need somewhere to add names now, so we're gonna need like a text area. So I'm gonna to jump to the Quasar site and go to View Components, Form Components, and Input Text Field. And we want a text area style input. So I'm going to jump to text area over on the right here. And I'll grab the code for this. And I'll paste that after this H2. Save that. Okay, I want this text area to be white. So I'm going to add a BG color prop. Set that to white. And I want a placeholder, so I'll add a placeholder which just says enter names on separate lines. And I'll give it some rows and columns as well to make it a bit bigger. So I'll set the rows to 10. I'll set calls to 40. Save that. Okay, and I want to increase the text size on this a little bit. So I'm going to add a selector for the text area and I'll set the font size to 22 pixels and the line height to 1.3 em save that doesn't look like the line height is working so I'm just going to inspect this and okay it looks like it's already got line height assigned to it so maybe if I just surround this text area in this Q text area class, that might fix it. So I'll try that Q dash text area. Then I'll stick this text area inside there. Save that. Okay, the line height seems to be working now. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Um, we're gonna need a button to click. So I'm gonna stick a button after this Q input. So a Q dash btn element and I'm going to give this a label with the text pick a winner and I'm going to give this a color prop set that to primary to set it to our themes primary color okay I want to center this button so I'm going to stick it inside a row so a div with a class of row put that button inside there and then I'll add a class of justify center to center this button. And I'll also add a margin class to the top to create a little gap between the text area and the button. So Q-MT for margin top, dash MD for medium. And I'd like this button to be a bit bigger, so I'm going to add a size 
crop, set that to XL, extra large. And I'm not crazy about this primary color we've got for the theme. I'd like it to be a red color. So I'm going to open up the theme file. So CSS, quasar.variables.scss. And I'm going to set the primary color to the negative color, which is a nice red color. So I'm going to copy this negative color code, just paste it here next to primary. Save that. Okay, this is looking pretty sweet now. So I think we've pretty much finished designing this bit. And now when the user clicks this button, we want the curtain to lift up and we want to show our names animation. So we'll design that screen next. So I'm going to jump back to our winnerpicker.view page. I'm going to add a new div after the add names div for our winner screen. So I'll add a div with a class of winner screen. And within there, for now, I'm just going to stick a paragraph with a class of text white with just some text which says winner screen. Now I'm going to add a data property to determine whether or not we show this winner screen. So in the script section, I'm going to get rid of this name bit. I'm going to add a data function which returns an object. And I'm going to add a property called show winner screen. And we'll set that to false initially. So we're not going to show it at first. And then I'm going to add a click handler to the button, the pick a winner button. And this will trigger a method called, let's call it pick winner. And so I'll create a methods object and create our pick winner method. And the first thing we'll do in there is just set this show winner screen property to true. So this dot show winner screen equals true. Now, if we're showing the winner screen, then we don't want to show this add names section. So I'm going to add a v if directive to this add names cue card. So v if not show winner screen. And then I'm just going to add a v else to this winner screen div. So if we're not showing this cue card, then we want to show this winner screen div. So I'll just add v else here. Save that. Okay, so now if we click this button, we should see this add name section disappear and we should see our winner screen appear. So let's try that. Okay, so the add names section disappeared, but we can't see our winner screen, which should for now just have this paragraph in it. I think that's because we need to add a z index to this winner screen div. So I'm going to jump down to the styles, add a new selector for the winner screen, and give that a z index of 4, so it sits on top. And we can now see the text winner screen. So if I just refresh, click the button, yeah, the first screen hides, and then we see the winner screen appear. However, it's still showing the curtain, and we want this curtain to lift up when the winner screen is shown. So I'm going to jump up to the curtain div, which is here. I'm going to get rid of that show class, and instead I'm going to make that show class conditional. So I'm going to bind to the class attribute. And we're going to add a class of show, but only when we're not showing the winner screen. So not show winner screen. Okay, I'll save that. Click on the button again. Okay, great. So the curtain pops up and we see the winner screen and we see our stage as well. Okay, so let's add some stuff to this winner screen. So we're going to need somewhere to display the name of the winner. So I'm going to use a cue card again to do that. So I'm going to get rid of this paragraph inside the winner screen div and I'm going to add a cue card. And I'm going to give this a prop of dark to make it dark. I'm going to give it a class of BG primary to give it our themes primary color. And I'm going to give it a prop of bordered to make it bordered. And I'm going to stick a cue card section within that. And then within there, I'm going to add a div with a class of text h6, which will give it the styles of a h6 heading, but without all of the margin and padding and stuff. And within that, I'll just stick a name for now. John Connor. Let's save that. Click the button. Okay, that looks pretty good. And now I'm going to add a heading to the top of the page, which just says winner. 
so we know what this page actually means. So above this cue card, I'm going to add a h1 with a class of text white, class of absolute top, so stick it to the top, and text center to make it centered, and text bold to make it bold. And inside that, I'm just going to add the text winner. Let's save that. Okay, that's pretty good. I'd like it to have the same shadow that we can see on this heading here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the styles for this deep shadow, which are here. Cut that and get rid of this H2 selector. And I'm going to create a class, generic class called deep shadow. Paste those styles in there. And then I'm going to add this class to both of our headings. So first of all, this H2 within our add names section. So deep shadow. And then again on this H1 in our winner screen. So deep shadow, save that. Okay, I'll just reload that. Yeah, we can still see that shadow on our first heading. And we can see it on our second heading as well now. Okay, so once the user gets to this page, they've got no way of getting back to the start and starting again with a new list of names. So I'm going to stick a button at the bottom which just says start again. So after this cue card, I'll add a button, a cue dash button element. And I'll give this a color of primary and a class of start again and absolute to position it absolutely. And then I'll add a label of start again. Save that. Okay, and I want this to be down at the bottom. So I'm going to add some styles for this element. So within this winner screen selector, I'll add a selector for our button. And we've added a class of start again, so I can use that class. So start again. And I'm going to give this a bottom of 20 pixels. And to get this in the center horizontally, I'm going to add a left property of 50%. And then to nudge that back a bit, I'm going to add a property of transform, where I'll set translate x to minus 50%. Save that. Okay, great. So now we want this button to do something. So I'm going to add a click handler to it. Where are you, button? There it is. So I'm going to add that click. Uh, we'll trigger a method called start again. Um, we'll create that method in our methods here. Start again. And for now, we'll just set show winner screen back to false. So this dot show winner screen equals false. Save that. Okay, click pick a winner. See the winner screen. Click start again. And we're back on the start screen. If you like this app so far, make sure you smash the like button and don't forget to subscribe. In the next video, we're going to finish this up and make it do something other than just looking sexy as hell. And then we're going to use it to pick our giveaway winner. So remember, if you want to take part, make sure you leave a comment below with the hashtag giveaway telling us why you love Quasar. Do it now because the competition will be closed in a few days. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.